Today I have a fun little project that I'd like to share with you. How to how to make these adorable little carrots here. I think they look cute sitting in this tray. Um, you could put them in a basket. Cute just to be sitting around for springtime, for Easter. And it is a great stash buster. You don't need much material at all to make one of these. Um, matter of fact, I just went through my scrap bin and found pieces that were big enough, that I felt big enough to make the carrots. So we have three different sizes. I'm only going to make one size, but I'll list in the description for the three different sizes. Um, all you have to do is pick out however many carrots you want to make of different oranges and coordinating greens and kind of like folly mustardy browns to go for the stems. So we have a large carrot. This is the size we'll be making today. And he is six, about um, just a carrot without the little stem. You'll need to cut your fabric six inches by 14 inches and you'll need two pieces cut for that size. And then we have a medium one. He's just kind of short and fatter. And he's six and a half by ten and a half is what you'll have to cut your fabric for. And then we have these adorable little ones. Aren't they just too cute? And they are four and a half by ten. And that's the size you'll cut your orange fabric. This one I just thought was so adorable. It's just a fall leaves, but it gives you the oranges and cream color. And I thought that would be great for a, a carrot. And then this one is just a yellow leaf. And then of course we have the orange. So we'll just pile those back up on our tray. And then for our stems, you will need two pieces that are one inch by ten and a half inches and then a pipe cleaner. And you'll need three stems per carrot. So like I said, we're gonna make the big one today. And I cut my fabric six by 14. I cut it so it's right sides together so I can cut both pieces at one time. So what I'm going to do is take and fold it in half just to give a little crease at that middle point. So it's a long way I'm folding the six inches in half. Then I'm going to use my friction pen and just make a little, a little mark. And then you're going to take a ruler. And you're going to go from the corner of your fabric to that point. And you're just going to draw a line. And you're going to do that on both, both corners. So we're just going to move the ruler over to this side, line it up in that corner, and line it up on that dash. Like I said, I'm using a friction pin. So with an iron or heat, it will be removed from the, the fabric. So I'm going to line up with right sides together. And I'm going to put a few pins in it. It just helps hold it together. I put one at the top. And then I put one on each side down here at the bottom. And then when you sew, 
you're going to sew a quarter inch on the inside. So I have my quarter inch foot on. And I just line it up with this pin mark. So then I sew on the inside of that. So we're going to do that. And then when you get down to the bottom, you want to make sure you back stitch down here in the corner. So what I do is I stitch all the way to this line and then back stitch a little bit. And then when I come to the other side, I start the line and, you know, do your back stitch and then come up. That's reinforcing this point as we're pushing through the stuffing um, and the stick to make sure, you know, it all gets down in there. And you don't want to poke through it, so that's why we reinforce down there. So I'm just going to sew this real fast. Now, if you don't have a quarter inch foot, you can draw this first line and then draw another line a quarter inch in, and then that's the line you follow with your needle if you don't have the quarter inch foot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and our rotary cutter and we're just going to line it up on that pin mark that we drew. That's our cut line. And we're just going to cut along that line. Along both sides. Well, it looks like I need to replace my rotary blade. Then what we're going to do is we're going to trim this end a little bit. There's so much extra fabric down here that we don't need. So I just take my snippets and kind of taper in and then, you know, cut the tip off and then taper a little more just to help reduce that bulk down there. And then you can take it to your ironing board or um, I'm just going to finger press it, but we're going to fold it down roughly about a half an inch. And I do a half an inch because when we start doing the threading later on, it's going to help keep, give you a bigger section to weave your thread through to hold down this because that's what's going to be your raw, uh, your finished edge. So I'm just throwing a couple pins in here just to hold it in place until we're you can go ahead and turn it forward so it's the right direction if you wanted to. But I put the pins in because it makes it easier for me to go ahead and fold that under. That's just my preference. So we're going to go ahead and turn this the right side. Careful not to poke yourself. So there's our little carrot. And then I'm just using the stick that comes in the polyfill to help push out that end, that little tip. And now we're going to fill it. I just get the polyfill from Walmart, big bag. And we're taking, you know, at first I just take a little piece and really get it down into that point. As far as I can get it, you know, pushed down in there. And then you just keep filling it up. Make it as full 
as you would like your carrots. You know, I want my I make mine pretty pretty full in there. You know, no carrots are the same, so feel free to um, take the technique and, you know, make different sizes. Make some short, um, stubby, you know, carrots or, I now see, you know, the purple and a cream color carrots in the store. So, you know, you can make any any color and any style using the same technique as long as you have a you know the rectangle so for each carrot I did not change the stem everything else is you know I change but the stem stays stays the same for all sizes of the carrots so it's all stuffed you can see where I kind of left a little bit of room in there. And we're going to set our carrot aside. We're going to make our stems now. So they're one inch by ten and a half. You need two of them per, per stem. You're going to put wrong sides together. Now there's a couple ways that you could do this you can do the fray edge which is the way we're doing it today or you can cut with a pinking blade and you know have that more rustic type look but today we're just gonna I just cut them with the rotary and then you know you just kinda fray the edges and the more you know you display them and they get touched and handled the more it's gonna fray and that's kind of the look that I like so that's what we're gonna do today so I pin mine like I said with wrong sides together um, just to help hold it and with the I'm going to do the chain stitch and you're going to stitch quarter inch on each side and that's going to leave enough opening that the chenille stem will slide right down in the middle there so let's sew okay now that we got our stems sewn together you're just going to take the chenille stem and put right down the middle and that's going to just help it so we can bend and curve our leaves stems any way we would like you will have a little hangover I do trim mine but I don't trim them till the end once I start getting them ready to bundle together here. And I just used some pipe cleaners that I had left over from making the crafts during the holidays because it's not going to get seen. Like I said, it's a great stash buster to use up some of those oranges and greens that you may have. Okay. So I'm just going to trim off the end just so there's just a little sticking out. Do not use your good fabric scissors for this. Don't ask me how I know that. But it will leave. It will ruin them and tear them up. So over here I have some. I just have some white DMC floss. We're going to use that or you, to tie our. stems together you can use strong thread multiple strands of it I was having issues of every it breaking so I use four to six strands of the DMC floss 
So I'm just taking and putting the ends together of the stems and I'm rotating them but crunching them all together in there. But each stem is put in, you know, like a different way. And then make sure all the ends are down there. And then we're just going to tie the string on there to hold them together. I'm pulling pretty tightly and just wrap it several times around the end. And then we're going to tie it in a knot. And I tie the knot several, several times on one way and then I flip it around and tie the knot again. Just making sure it's stuck in there. Not going to come off really. And then just trim off the end. So there's our cute little stem. We're going to set that aside and then I have a needle over here with some floss in it, DMC floss. And I'm using the whole six strands for this. And then I'm, we're going to take our carrot. I like to start at a hem or a seam, but you're welcome to start wherever you want. And you're just going to weave this through all the way around. But you can see where I, why I want the bigger fold. So then when I pull my thread through, it gives me bigger space. Make sure when you pull, don't pull all the way through. Yes, I've done that a couple times. We're just going to weave our thread all the way, all the way around. So comment down below and let me know what your favorite springtime or Easter memory is. I would love to hear what your memories are. Mine was always getting up Easter morning, getting ready, having in our Easter dress, going to church, spending time with the family, being able just to, you know, be with your, you know, with the family and stuff because, you know, not, not all of them are around is what we had. So those were my fond memories of, of Easter. And for springtime, it's just seeing the tulips and the flowers starting to come up and bloom is my favorite part of spring. Okay, we made it all the way around. So we're gonna take our stem and we're gonna push it down into the stuffing and then the carrot. And then we're going to just tie it close, cinch it up. I like to kind of help it around so it don't, the threads don't break. That's one of the tips that I've learned to help keep it, but you want to cinch it up as tight as you can around the stem and then we're going to tie it in a knot. So I cinch it up with one loop and then I'm going to hold it as tight as I can, make another one. Then I wrap this thread around and make another knot, cut the ends. I'm going to push it down in as much as I can into the carrot if you can. Adjust your stems. And there you go. A cute little carrot to display. Whether it in a basket, on a tray, in your entryway. It just makes a cute display. So if you like what you saw, please comment below. Let me know what your favorite Easter and springtime memories are. 
And whether you're new or old here, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're new here and you want to stick around, please hit the subscribe button and the notification button so then you know the next time I upload a video. If there's something particular you'd like to see me sew, quilt, or create, um, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Until next time, have a great day.